You're listening to Chameleon Church. Biblical antidotes for the modern man. With your host, Alan Aguirre. Alan Aguirre with your Tuesday morning Chameleon Church show. I, I guess because I say Alan Aguirre with your incorruptible two-minute warning, I say that more on a weekly basis than I do Alan Aguirre, host of the Chameleon Church Show, coming to you live and direct from the Wasatch back in northern Utah where it's not snowing yet. We, we've had teens. Our temperatures have been in the teens the last couple of few evenings. It's so I'm like, I, 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 I must be, be making my, my, my wife miserable because I keep going, I'm not ready for this. I'm not ready for this winter. Look, rock and roll hair this morning, people. Woo! Yeah. Um, remember that bed bed head? The bed head head uh, pace or whatever? Remember that? Well, if you're an old, old guy like me, you'd remember that. Uh, what's going on? Um, Tuesday morning. Oh, it's it's Tuesday. It's October 31st, and my granddaughter calls it Halloween. Halloween. If she sees anything that's remotely close to Halloween, she goes, Halloween, Halloween, like she's a little alarm clock. Uh, she's four years old, and she doesn't like any of it. So she's like, no, Saba, no. And uh, it's, it's hilarious. Um, yeah, Halloween. Um, uh, the, uh, All Hallowed Eve tonight. Uh, another Catholic thing, if you know the history of it, right? I mean, how, how awesome is that? They take over the church, they kick the Jew out, and then they bring all this goofy stuff into the equation. And uh, Protestantism, because it's Reformed Catholicism, is all about it. So, <sighs> Lenny mentioned Lenny and I, you know, got a chance to chat a little bit before the uh, before the broadcast. And um, based on Revelation, the end time church is described twice in the Revelation of John as being those that keep the commandments. And and hold to the the um, the testimony of Jesus. Those two things. Every I mean everybody knows that. Well, not well. That's I, I can't even say that. But to say that you hold to the commandments says that you are Torah compliant, Torah observant, Torah uh, aware that you are actually a Torah observant believer. And when you keep to the testimony of Jesus, which we which is defined as the spirit of prophecy in Revelation, the spirit of prophecy would is part of charismatica. Now everybody believes for the most part when you're if you're a Christian you basically believe you've been taught that when you got saved, when you came to Jesus, when you when you did your I don't know, however you got saved, uh, you, the sinner's prayer or whatever other weird thing that they did to you, that you received the Holy Spirit at that point. That's not true, as, we, as, the, as the New Testament teaches. Uh, the, the baptism of John is unto salvation, but then there's the separate baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is, that's Paul's doctrine. I mean, we see it. It's in there. So Revelation describes the end-time church as charismatic, Torah observers, which is what Jesus was, not the Pharisees. The Pharisees were just were, were Talmud observers, and they weren't charismatic. Then Jesus called his disciples, and they were already they were either borderline Torah observant, but they knew about the Torah because they were Jews, but then explained to them the proper way to observe Torah in light of what the Word of God said outside of the rabbinical thing that had been going on. And then gave them the anointed anointed them early on as his apostles to be able to speak in tongues, heal the sick, cast out demons, and raise the dead. Alan is and never says that they spoke in tongues. Well, you know, that's your problem. And and if you say that, you probably don't speak in tongues either. So uh, always always consider the source when someone's trying to tell you that you're wrong about what it is that you're saying or believing. Or understanding regarding these things. Consider the source. I don't, I don't pay heed to those that can't heal the sick, 
or anything else for that matter, uh, as any sort of um, authority on the subject matter. And it's always, always, always interesting to see the the um, those that champion anti charismatica and that you know these these authorities on the te- on on the matter that don't do it, and they actually will tell you why. Do they have these horrible horror stories? I was raised in a Pentecostal church. I was, I've been around Pente- Pentecostals my whole life. Well, so what? No one cares. Maybe you went to a really bad Pentecostal church. I mean, do you know what I'm saying? Because God, there's nothing because there's nothing broken with God, but there's everything broken with the institution known as a Romanized Western Church. Everything. And there's everything broken about man. So, yes. Um, I was going to say, are you going to jump on camera? You can even get out of the driveway and you come running down here to say something. <laughs> so, hey, hey, based on the traditional, I'm not, what day are we in the, in the Jewish calendar? The 17th? Well, on this day, Noah entered the ark and the rain began to fall. If that's what the date is today. I just got that alert. I gave myself that alert. What day is it? Yeah, it says uh, 50, that would be tomorrow, the 17th. So, yeah, interesting, right? Um, so the, the revelation of John, the end time church is described as being charismatic Torah observers. Why do I say that? Well, I say that because the majority of Christian, of Christianity, the majority of Christians out there aren't charismatic. So if, if the Elijah list is any, indi- any indication of the numbers of charismatic Christians in Christendom as a whole, uh, they have what, 300, 350,000 subscribers? They have less than half a million subscribers. So let's give them the benefit of the doubt, well, not the Elijah list, but Christians. And let's say there's half a million charismatic, like active, proactive, half a million charismatics in the church. That's nothing, considering... Uh, numbers are what seventy to seventy-five percent of the entire U.S. population is considered Christian, and that's just in the U.S. So, if there's only half a million charismatics, that's nothing in the big circle of all those that identify as Christians. And then, how many are Torah observant? Because the majority, I'm going to say, eighty percent. I mean, if you watched my second-to-last Rude Awakening interview where I talk about Charismatica and go look at the, 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 the comments, everyone's losing their minds that they've allowed somebody on the Rude Awakening show to speak about speaking in tongues, to speak about the prophetic, to speak about Charismatica, to speak about the spiritual gifts. They are losing their minds in the comments. So, the, see, I know for a fact that, what, 80 90% of Torah observers aren't charismatic. So the percentage of charismatic Torah observers out there, uh, it's not very large. <laughs> it is so small in comparison to the entire institution of Christendom. And then you take the, the take. Take Christendom and then Torah observers. And I'm not talking rabbinical Torah observers. I'm talking, you know, the, anyway, the, the amount of, the number of charismatic Torah observers is so small. And, and, to, to, and, and when you consider that, when you, when you put that up against what the Revelation says twice about the dragon goes at this concentrates on the offspring of the woman of the offspring of the child that that woman has in Revelation 12 I believe it is and sets his sight to go he's going to go after those that are Torah observant charismatics Jesus was a Torah observant charismatic the writers of the New Testament were Torah observant uh, charismatics Paul became a Torah observant charismatic the fact that we're that small in number doesn't surprise me at all. It scares me, but it doesn't surprise me. Why does it scare me? Well, because 
the fewer of us that there are to come after. <laughs> um, and the reason why I bring all this up, because because we, we never know what we're going to talk about, is because last night my wife gave us a warning that the prophetic, we need to, <laughs> we need the prophets right now because of the times that we are living in, because of the last three and a half weeks. And last night, about 15 hours ago, there was this little prophetic roundtable with Chuck Pierce, Cindy Jacobs, Jeremiah Johnson. Is that, was that was Jeremiah? Is that his name? David Jeremiah. Whatever his name is. We're not quite, I'm not quite sure about that guy. But, but anyway, that's besides the point. Cindy Jacobs, Chuck Pierce, and uh, four other people. It's like six people. Uh, I posted it on Band. And uh, Cindy Jacobs, we posted her word from... I think Thursday or Friday, that she got uh, as soon as she was in the land right before the attack. So that was about four, four weeks ago. And what she said, they're all basically saying the same thing. We can discuss that. Um, it's not pretty. And, you know, you three weeks ago, because I took two weeks off, so that would have been about three weeks ago, on a Wednesday, uh, two-minute warning, I basically went off script from the two-minute warning Corinthians thing and basically said, look, look inside your window. This is what's going on. This is what Jesus says. This is what, the, this is what it says. And if we're in that time, this is what we need to be looking for. So we've already said essentially the same thing three weeks ago. And why is that important? Because it's important that if I speak prophetically, it's important that it's um, backed up by other prophetic voices. If you're the only guy saying the sky is falling, don't listen to that only guy. Well, you have to be careful with that too, right? Because there was because out of right, you got the Jehoshaphat Ahab scenario with one prophet versus the other four hundred that were in unison and simultaneously come, speaking from a lying prophetic spirit. So you can see the the amount the amount of discernment that's constantly needed is so much, so high. How much more right now? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, we are being uh, what I said three weeks ago is being spoken about by other vetted prophetic voices in the last 24 hours. Lenny? <laughs> yep. <laughs> You've been studying this crap longer than me. You know, it, the thing that you posted last week about Lance Wall now, I, I reposted it on the branch. Over and over, he had a one-liner. He says, it's towards the end of it. He says, you know, I'm all for how Jesus came as the Lamb of God and how we received our salvation. He was very gracious and gentle. And he goes, but you want to know something? The church has stayed in a place where all they do is they see the Lamb of God and they won't get there when the lion of the tribe of Judah is roaring and walking up and down the landscape. And I'm paraphrasing what he said. But he said, he goes, we need to know that is the gospel of the kingdom. The lion of the tribe of Judah is coming back. And it's not to take away from the sweet, sweet lamb of God. But it's to understand what the, what the lion is doing right now and what's being prepared. When he said that, I'm just going, oh my. Gosh, he said it so eloquently, and you could hear a pin drop in the audience. And I'm going, yeah, we're, we're there. We, we've talked about it for years. We've lived it and breathed it. I remember from the early first days of Chuck Smith, you just go, what? And then even with all the misunderstandings throughout the last 40 years, here we are today, and... It's unequivocal because, I'm sorry, from what Trump did, bringing the accords together, establishing that, and you 
did you hear what Erodogon said yesterday? He says, no, Israel has no right to that land. And he goes, once they cross this red line, I will step in. And you don't think that sh shook up the State Department? Everybody else is talking about it. They're trying to avoid it. Do you know what that means? Who is the one from the north? What are all these things are about ready to, the two places to watch are Turkey and Iran. And right now they're sitting back, pulling all the strings for the puppets. And they're even pulling the puppet strings of China. Yeah. And all this is just unfolding and nothing to fear because our redemption draws nigh. Yeah, it is scary because... It's going to affect us. We, we thought we were untouchable in the United States. We are not untouchable. See, I remember, I remember you saying something a long time ago, late 80s, early 90s. Okay, let's, let's just say 1989. I mean, because it really was that long ago. Yeah, it was. You were saying there's this verse where he looks to the West, sees there's no threat, and sets his sights on Israel. That's right. And the reason why there's no threat to the West, we, and we discussed it, is the United States has apparently become an e has lost their economic and military Prowess. strength yep. in the in the world stage. Holy crap! Look at what has happened in two years with this guy. In the last two years with this guy that they say was voted in as president. Has destroyed is has destroyed us economically to the extent that we probably couldn't even fund a war to defend ourselves because we've given all our money to the to, to, to Ukraine and Iran. What the hell? And I mean that that alone touches both of those things. It does. And 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 here's the thing, and I've said this before. It's not about us. The only reason why it's about us is because we're, the, we're the, the, the strongest ally Israel has. Why do you think they're trying to take us out? Why do you think they're doing this from the inside out? Why do you think... I mean, they, they literally deleted and retracted the Democratic National Convention. Uh, what year was that? When they, when they wrote... When they, they, they literally voted as a party what their party lines were. I, I watched it. No one believed me. And then they, they backpedaled like two weeks later and they literally deleted the footage or whatever was on YouTube regarding this vote. But this is what they voted. The Democratic Party lines were, there is no God. Jerusalem is not the capital of Israel. No, marriage is not between just a man and a woman. And, 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 and the pro-abortion stance. And then Obama flat out came out and said, we're not a Judeo-Christian nation anymore. And then as soon as that came out of his mouth, he turned around and went, I salute you, the Islamic... Republic of Iran. And then when he left, he gave them pallets of American dollars. Biden just released and unfroze some stuff. I'm not sure if that's still in limbo, but see, none of that matters. You know, if you want to argue, you know, oh, arguing points. No, you know what? It's really clear. If it's, it, was, it was Greenspan. How do you, how, how does the TLC, Trilateral, Trilateral Commission, Take over the what's their agenda? They want to take over the world. How do they take over the world? They got to get rid of the USA first. How do you get rid of the USA? You sabotage, you, inf you infiltrate their church, their family, their, their business, money, and their, and their um, education. They, they mention, he mentions four of the seven mountains, and they have done that. That's right. And here we are in 2023. We are in a financial, bi financial bind. I mean, my wife just went and bought, what was it? She, should, she sent it to my, 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 our girls, a picture of like four items that cost her over $10 when it should have cost her five. I mean, I went to Costco the other day. Uh, I think I, I put a down payment on something. <laughs> it's, it's out of control. 
uh, right? And Mario Murillo warned us, the church as a whole, because see, you have to understand, why is it, what is, Alan, why do you guys always talk about politics? We don't want to hear about politics. Well, that's because you're ignorant, Mr. Christian. Mr. Christian. Like Lance said, hey, man, if you're praying your little heart out in the prayer chapel of the Titanic, the Titanic goes down, you still go down with it. It doesn't matter if you're praying in the prayer chapel of the Titanic. This, this, your city goes down, you go down with it. Your state goes down, you go down with it. Your country goes down, you go down with it. Do you know what the gospel of the kingdom is? It's geopolitical. He's coming to take over the nations. Let's listen. To, what about our, our pretty little Christian song, right? What's that Christian little Christmas song that says the 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 gover the, 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 the governments are on his shoulders? What's that Christmas song that says that? Uh, but it's true. See, they don't, they don't see they don't know this. Christians don't know this because their pastors don't teach it because their pastors don't understand it themselves. But the governments of the of the of the of man, he's coming for the governments of man are, are sit on his shoulders. That's right. They don't understand this. So it has everything to do with politics. Because you're because you know what? Whether you know it or not, or whether you like it or not, and I know I'm not talking to I mean, Chameleon Church understands this because we we right. No. <laughs> We've beat it into them. Politics affects your economy. Economy affects how much money you have in the bank. That affects your 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 giving. I'm just kidding. <laughs> It affects how much money you pay at the gas pump. It affects how much money you pay at the grocery store. It, it impacts all those things. We are based on the petrol dollar. Most people don't even know that. Well, here we go. So this this prophetic word, these, this, this, this prophetic roundtable from last night, are warning us. Uh, some, here's some of the warnings. And then, Chris, I, we haven't heard from you yet. Are you, are you there? Is your mic on? Testing. One, two, three. It's on now. Yeah. Um, in the same way Israel was attacked by the, from by, on their southern border, so will we be attacked in the southern border? That's what they said. Uh, we can we can we can stop that attack through prayer and fasting, and we have until April to do so. Chuck Pierce said a very long time ago, a few years ago, a few years ago, not a very long time ago, but maybe within the last decade, he said that the spring of oh, of twenty four. Was going to be a very, 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 very difficult and hard one. Um, we're hearing 2026. We're hearing three, three plus years now out there, which is what we've been saying. If we entered into the first 42 months, we did so probably, you know, well, we did so around April, but it's been right. What's how? What's April through October? April, May, June, July, August, September, October. <gasps> There's your six months, Lenny. Yep. That's 42, three and a half, which would bring October 7th from then on three years, which coincides with what Chuck just said. Son of a. <laughs> well, Tom Horn, the late, he just passed away, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody came at it from a different angle. He said the same thing. All those guys on Skywatch. And they're coming from the G6. Yeah. Wrong. So, it does impact us. Uh, what else? Uh, supply lines. He's been talking about supply lines since 2008, that guy. Chuck Pierce. Um, gas and oil. He suggested, I think, um, see, my, wife, I, I, my wife and I went back and forth on it. She was listening to it, we were, and then we were doing this. Something about supply lines. Uh, gas and oil, we need, uh, you need to pray. Um, if you can find the gas and oil supply line in your area, uh, maybe go drive it, pray for it, because he, he's suggesting that's what, where they're going to attack, because that'll keep uh, us from having gasoline as well as the uh, fuel for our, our homes, to heat our homes, uh, to cook and heat our homes, you do the whole gas thing. But then gas runs electricity too, doesn't it? So... Way, ways to pray. Um, and he said something about three years. So
So we're so what what you've been hearing here has been, is has, is being confirmed. I love being wrong. I I I would rather be incorrect about all this stuff more than you'll ever know. Uh, see, unlike. I wrote a line in 1989, martyr's obsession, not my addiction. And what that meant was, I, ha I don't see anything romantic about martyrdom. I don't see anything cool, hip, or yay about martyrdom. Because there's, there's people out there that, you know, that do. You know, they, they fantasize martyrdom. They have fantasized the, the the tribulation they have fantasized the end times right or you know they they, they rom no I'm sorry they romanticize it I'm using the wrong word I don't see anything romantic about martyrdom I don't see anything romantic about the end times scenario or the tribulation or anything like that I don't think it's romantic at all I don't romanticize it um, it's not it's not going to be romantic <laughs> it's going to be ugly it's going to be you know all sorts of nasty and for some reason we have been chosen to be alive there's people out there that'll say i mean literally there are literally more of them than they are of us saying people have been saying this for for hundreds of years alan you're you're wrong they have been saying this for hundreds of years people smarter than you scholars you know see if you're a scholar you can't tell these people you're a scholar because they'll you know, they look at you and they, you can't be a scholar because I'm not a scholar. You know what I'm saying? There's, it's just, it's just twisted. And I'm going to get into that in two minute warning because there's stuff I'm about to talk about in chapter two of first Corinthians that people are going to have a problem with. But anyway, um, Paul said it 2000 years ago. He goes, when they say the Lord delayeth is coming, he says, let him be accursed, Maranatha, anathema. Yeah. He said that 2000 years ago that people were saying the same thing back then. Yeah. So there's people out there that are gonna that are gonna not like anything that we're talking about. They've been saying this for thousands. Of, they've been saying this for hundreds of years, Alan. You know this is this is gonna keep going for another five hundred, whatever. It's like, well, you know what? Yes, it's true. People people have been saying this for a very long time. The difference between this time and then, the most important one is Israel wasn't a nation state. They right. didn't have their own state. Right. That's a huge differentiate market differentiator. From every other time, and um, I mean, when did Iran and China? When how, when did they? How long have they been buddy buddies? Well, just about a couple years. Yep. <laughs> as soon as Trump got booted out, and uh, uh, you know, Sleepy Joe got in there. See, none of this would happen under a Trump presidency. Everyone behaved themselves because they knew. He wouldn't, he wouldn't tolerate it. We are so weak right now on the world stage. Everybody knows it. Everybody talks about it. They're, they're laughing at us. Anyway, I, I'm going to be quiet now. I've been talking for way too long. It's, it's, it's your show now, Chris. It's on you. Welcome to the Chameleon Church Show, coming to you live and direct. Yeah, I need uh, Shalom of the God of the Universe. And I see, I saw Frank on here. I just want to speak blessings over Frank today, Lord. Touch him in his heart, provide for all his needs. Seeing these people in the chat who... I would assume most of them are here because they feel part of the community um, centered around not charismatic messianic, but the Lord. So just bless everyone on this call that it needs. We just we just declare the shalom of the risen Lord Yeshua over this family and over our nation and all the families these people represent and their communities. God, we don't trust in chariots or horses. We trust in your power and the name of the Lord Yeshua to fight our battles, to bring victory, <clears throat> give us strength and courage and boldness in this hour. 
give us discernment. And we just ask for your grace and your peace. See, in some of, I think the clip that I saw this week that was the most biggest where my spirit was really hurt or or discernment was just like, wow, this is happening was, was that speech from the Turkish president. And I just was like, man, it, it, it just, I just had like these discernment chills, like my, my tentacles, spiritual, that's probably the wrong word, but my spiritual antennas were just tingling. I was like, man, this is, this is like a, a replay of a, of a Hitler speech. Yep. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is now this is it's getting real you know it's it's sad and and concerning but also man why am i alive lord why don't let me blow it don't don't let me be swept away i was thinking about mob mentality i'll back up just a second hey can i share a testimony first sure i woke up sunday morning uh, i was playing drums at church and and as you as you there, there's something around when musicians who love the Lord get together to make music to minister to him, you, you, you can feel resistance. And every time I feel that resistance in the days ahead, I'm like, oh, I know, I know God's going to move or he wants to move when an assembly comes together to worship the Lord through music. I woke up Sunday morning and I was just like, I can't move my jaw. My jaw had locked up. And it's done that in the past before. And I'm just like, what is going on? And I'm trying to move it and it like hurts to like open like I can't open it. And I'm and I'm and I'm just like trying to work it through. I'm massaging it. I'm just like I, it's locked up. And I'm like, to the point, you know, 10 minutes, I'm like getting kind of worried. Like, is this like what's going on? And I just like, Chris, pray over yourself. <laughs> so i took out my headphones i was listening to something and i just started speaking in tongues and i put hands on my jaw and i'm just praying and 20 seconds in my jaw goes pop totally open and i just started laughing i'm like thank you lord like like just engaging his spirit <laughs> over your own body speaking out loud i think that's really key speaking the name of Jesus over myself and I'm and I'm like laugh crying and I'm just like thank you Lord I'm like I've I had this feeling of like why is this surprising to me and I was saying God I want to be in a position where this happens I don't want to be surprised I want this to be normal and I felt in my heart a conviction of like don't be in a place where you're where yes every everything god sh is, should be he does in our life should be surprising in the like celebratory he's awesome but like i don't want to be in place that i'm surprised that he he solves my jaw problem and it was it's that increase my faith lord um you must increase i must decrease so i just when you're talking earlier about um I think Alan, you said something about healing the sick and messianic charismatic. So that I would just thought I should share that as a encouragement to everyone here. Like the stuff is so real. And so, and so then when I think of the dramaticness that's happening now in the same way, we shouldn't be surprised at the mercies God's doing at the battles he's going to win at the, at the, when the pot's being stirred, it's all because God is orchestrating something for his ultimate glory and redemption and returning to earth to reign in a, in a physical location. That's the big idea for me this morning. I, 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 uh, I, I taught at my church last week and I was, I was reading about, I was just feeling this thing about popular culture. I'll tie this together in a minute. And so I was doing a, a study on culture. And basically the premise is we're all worshiping all the time. 
whether we consciously declare it or not. So on this on this group, we are saying we worship the Lord Yeshua. We worship Adonai. We we are intending to worship Him in our actions, our words, following the commands. Do what He commands. I ordered some new tassels. I ordered some new tassels, and 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 it is an act of faith to say once those tassels get here, I'm going to continue to wear them. What you were saying about observing feasts, how we put this reality, this his commandments and this thing we believe into reality. And it's going to get tricky when I wear my tassels in public and today, you know, anyway, well, culture pop pop. Well, go ahead. No, no, it's like you're just, I mean, that's just segues into the, uh, the part that I was trying to avoid. <laughs> Can I finish my thought? Please. Okay. So popular culture. I'm studying the word culture. I had a chat with my son about pop music. Something was hip hop or something was playing on the radio and we're having this conversation about it. And I'm said, yeah, it's just pop music. And he's like, dad, this isn't pop. I said, well, what I mean is it's on the radio. Therefore, did you know pop means popular? He goes, oh, that makes sense. This is popular music it means it's, it's achieved some level of notoriety that it is in the public conversation if it's on FM radio. And we're having this conversation. So pop culture, popular culture. I was studying the word culture. It comes from the Latin, I think it's cultus. So cultus, Latin de derived, we get the word culture. Other And Latin is so, you know, it, when you go back to it, my daughter's studying Latin. She's a junior in high school. I can't believe it. I'm having this conversation with her. We get the culture is the root of, the, of lots of words we get. So culture, obviously, civil, civilization. Then you get attention, adoration, honoring. The concept of honoring comes from the same word. Guess what else comes from the word cultus? Worship. Hmm. So when you say popular culture, popular worship, pop worship. Okay, that is easily applicable to movies, entertainment, music, right? Well, what else is popular culture? Bob mentality. What is the ideology that culture is worshiping? What is the popular worship? And you've seen it historically over the years. Something comes in and popular culture, it's hip, it's the now, it changes and mob mentality latches onto it. And you could even say mob mentality sounds like really, really bad, which it is. But you could also say Bob mentality around cabbage patch dolls bob mentality around pokemon and xbox right it can also be innocuous innocent but the things that i've been seeing this year is that mob mentality and you're like and we've all seen them in the russian airport in san francisco schools on the freeway and you're just like oh my gosh ukraine you know pray for ukraine that whole thing and you're like guys Guys, there's stuff going on behind the scenes and how easy people will not just put up a flag, soft Palestinian flags uh, in my neighborhood this week. There's one thing to put up a flag or, you know, you, I got the T-shirt I got in Christian culture. I got the bumper sticker and then they don't really mean it. It's just trying to identify with something. But then it's another thing where it becomes aggressive and whoa and my discernment is going up and i'm like oh man what happens when we're in the grocery store and someone's wearing a palestinian armband and i'm like does not compute okay wait a second my hand goes up and i go okay don't we have an american hostages right now in gaza and if you're you like what what world are we in Where's Rambo? Where's the Arnold Schwarzenegger action movie that like when when American hostage are been like, why haven't we gone in there and freed our hostages? Like what kind of world are we in? We're not just like American hostages can be taken with no action by the United States.
On the world that the uh, we live in, the world that the United yes. States gives seven billion dollars of our stuff to Taliban. Rhetorical question, <laughs> but but like but not only that, we're now American citizens are pro the ideology that have actually taken people like them hostage. It's like this weird, like wow, like I'd go a little soft on that protest. I mean. Are you really like, okay. So that's, that's where I'm at. I'm like, God, I need more discernment. How? Cause it's getting real. It's getting serious. It's going to get worse. And I've just been thinking about, let me walk in your shalom and peace and give me grace to speak to my kids. Give me grace for the hard conversations that are coming when people all wait will be. Oh, you identify, this is, I'm going to pass the mic to you here in a minute, Alan. You identify with Israel. You, how can that, and you're just like, guys, do you know the history? Do you know what's really happening? Do you know the numbers reporting? I mean, it's in every paper, thousands dead reports Hamas. Uh, you think those numbers might be inflated? Do you think you're all boom toggled with media reports? And, and it's just like, but popular culture once they're last uh, last onto their ideology that they are worshiping, you're not going to convince them. Mm-hmm. Like th- this is not like oh I put it up on Facebook and you didn't believe me. It's there's there's a there's becoming a C and a dividing line, and and then I let me just last comment. How do you how do you say how do we pray for the peace of Israel as Psalm one twenty two commands us and et cetera et cetera. Peace of Israel, protect its walls. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people. But also, Lord, protect innocence. There are people in Gaza, a child, like, who is under their ideology of their parents. But Lord, may, show mercy. Let there be fewer casualties. Make your make it come quickly. We pray for for people to come into the knowledge of Yeshua in Gaza. Like it's that, it's that tension. Like, it's not like kill everybody. Pray that, that, that everyone dies. It's, it's like, God, let your mercy flow in surprising ways. That shouldn't be surprising to me for everyone involved, but also your will be done. And that, that's that, that weird tension of how we not become aggressive ourselves but praying the peace of and shalom of Jesus over over the entire situation because we need his mercy. Okay, I'm done. Well, you I'm hit done. it on the head. I mean, it's that's what's called the walk. It's the balance. It's the it's uh, allowing the Holy Spirit to lead, and yet at the same time, realizing we're dealing with humanity. You know. And, that's not an easy walk i have been i have felt a prayer and maybe this is us fasting like praying for the actual hostages like i i can't imagine the horror stories that are that are probably happening i I heard one yesterday that just came out and it caused the democrat that spoke it to cry and saying i'm changing a lot of my views were a mother and father on October 7th. They killed the father. And as they were raping the wife, they put the child in the oven so she could hear it melt. I started weeping and crying. I was in my car. I could not stop crying. And in my heart, I go, Lord, I don't want the spirit of anger. And yet at the same time, Lord, you tell us how to pray. I pray God gives our the soldiers their precision to take out the enemy and that, Lord, you would have mercy on the innocents. He knows. I go, I can't pray anywhere past that, but I pray that the enemies be destroyed. We got this authority right now up until that last three and a half years where we lay down our swords then. And uh, um, we can pray with authority that the Lord's enemies would be vanquished and that the Lord would go in. And uh, 
this is where in Western Christianity, we, we're going, no, 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 there's got to be, there's got to be this place. I, I, I'm losing my love. No, you love the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. But you got to realize too, you know what days we're in? We're in the ancient of days. We're in the days where the ancient of days is coming and the day where Sisera drove the post through the head of the enemies of God and put the evil to death, that's a reality. And uh, we're not, you know, through prayer, I think we can accomplish that and ask the Lord, Lord, take out the enemies and be there for the innocents. And uh, we have to, it's, I, I know that struggle. And when I was crying, I was going, Lord, don't let the spirit of anger overtake me. Make me more holy, you know. And every man that hath this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. So it, it that's what First John three talks all about. That and uh, I tell you one thing: everyone should on uh, what was it Monday, Sunday, or Monday? It was Jesus telling them on the Mount of Olives what was about ready to transpire when they asked him. So what does the end of the age look like? And then it was on Tuesday, right before, after he had that supper with his disciples. You can read John 14, 15, 16, and 17. And that was his sermon. That was his coup d'etat of everything they needed to hear to be able to put inside their heart to make it through and have the endurance of the saints. And it ended in 17 and says, just as I have fellowship with my father, you have fellowship with me. And I'm telling you, those are the verses. Those are the chapters to look at. What were his last words before he went to the cross? And it was John 14 through 17. You know, and um, that's what's going to help us endure. That's that's what's going to help us to say, not to romanticize it, but to say, you know, what? I'm going to be holy. Just like when you put on those eat seats, you know what? I'm just obeying the Lord. That's just an outward action of what's going on in my heart. Or Lord, I'm yours. And you know what? We're going to face conflicts and we're not going to escape it in America. Just look at, and you know, even though the media is conflating it for their own advantage, there is a civil war coming. Bob Jones said 25 years ago, and who's the head of the uh, Morning Star? What was his name? He's um, retired. Larry, Larry Randolph. Um, Not, uh, Chris Reed took his place. Who was the head guy? I forget his name. He, he wrote the book, Two Trees in the Garden. Gosh, I can't remember. His name. Yeah, a couple, a couple, two or three of them have warned us of uh, civil war they, here. They said the civil war is coming. They said this 20 years ago. Yeah. Civil war is here. Yeah. And when Bob Jones said it, he goes, I'll tell you one thing. He goes, the sword's going to swing both ways and you better bow your head low because he's going to have his way. Um, before I forget, okay. Remember that couple we prayed for that our friends of ours, family friends that were stuck in Israel and they were, it was really bad. <laughs> they needed to get out. It was during the pandemic. Right. And they got out and they're in Florida. Anyway, um, we're trying to get them to come. We're trying to get them to the conference. The last, um, and anyway, he, Isaac Rudolph, that's his name. He's arranging prayer and fasting for the hostages. And um, Aspen alerted me to, um, there's this, there's a guy here in Utah. Uh, Kendall knows him. You guys know Kendall. Uh, he tried to arrange a meeting between the two of us. He's a guy that's come out of Mormonism. He's a, about an hour and a half north of me. Uh, he's been on Rude Awakening. Um, he was there for the Passover. Right, um, right. He, wrote he, he, he snuck into Israel <clears throat> in the last couple of weeks. He posted last, yesterday he posted a video, 25 minutes long, of him walking around the memorial. Uh, the hostage memorial. It's amazing because there's all these lights going beaming up into the sky. When you're under attack, remember remember the uh, the Blitzkriegs in London, 
when the when the fighter when the bombers were coming from Germany to bomb London, they would turn off all the lights. Israel, they put on lights and they and they put them up into the sky. They're like, "We're here, here we are, biatches." You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's it's amazing. But this video, I posted it on Ban, absolutely <coughs> beautiful. Um, yeah. So Isaac, I, I will get the information, put it in band. Isaac Rudolph is arranging prayer and fasting for the hostages. Um, I've avoided watching and looking at what the IDF released or what the government released, Israeli government released regarding the atrocities that have occurred. So I really didn't need to hear uh, the one you just shared, Lenny. <laughs> I know. Um, it's uh, last night. Christina mentioned here's Christina mentioned this last night, and it's 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 really important because it's both of you have alluded to it, but we have to be very careful and very discerning on what we do and where we go, because see, you might not understand that. You might not you might not understand and believe that it's it's that it's no big deal that at the last minute you want to go get coffee at a coffee shop with somebody, but because this thing is spiritual, you have to be discerning about this. Here's why, and here's why my wife said it, and here's why I'm repeating it. Um, we have a friend that you know innocently innocently enough. Uh, last minute, decided to go get coffee with a friend in a suburban city in white bread America. And this friend of ours is is Jewish. She's not 100% Jewish, but she obviously looks it. Um, they just, you know, innocently, no big deal. Why would you even think twice about going to a coffee shop in White Bread America, and literally White Bread America, suburban city? And they did, and the table next to them are all Arabs, uh, men and women. And they are talking and doing their thing. And how often do you walk into a white suburban coffee shop and find a table full of arrows well not very rare not very often but if it's spiritual right and you're jewish and we know the signs and we know the times we're, we're in right now nothing happened there was no threat nothing like that but because this individual has discernment they knew that the grace was lifting and it was time to leave We're not anti-Arab, but we're anti the spirit of anti-Semitism, which can manifest with Arabs, uh, with any with any race, with Jews. <laughs> Jewish people are some of the most anti-Semitic people out there. If you watch the video, you you know that insurgence that's not happening at the Capitol right now. Yeah, don't get me started. Uh, did you see what's 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 in the middle of the of that group? Bunch of guys with kippas and, uh, and 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 talits. Bunch of Jews, pro-Palestinian, anti-Israeli Jews. Yeah, don't forget. While when the children of Israel were instructed to go into the land of Canaan and and, and get rid of the occupiers of the land of Canaan, the Canaanites who weren't entirely human, there were groups of them probably, you know, I, you know for a fact there was groups of them going, protesting what they were doing. I'm all, Chris is talking about mercy. Yes, I am all about mercy. I'm not about violence. I'm about per mercy, peace, mercy. Do everything you possibly can to live at peace with all men is a New Testament instruction. I try and do that. Believe me, I do. They might not know it, that that's what I'm doing, but I am. 
because their version of it is usually really passive and you know yeah i don't have time for that but i am merciful i am kind and loving <laughs> i know people don't believe that why do i say that because chris brought mercy but i can't shake the reality it's being suggested the uh, the spirit of a malachite and haman is out there right now well if that's the case What did God instruct Israel about the Amalekites? You wipe them out. Never forget what they did to you. Never forget. Do not forget what they did to you. And, and, to, and to constantly remind them of, of it by not letting them live in peace because of what they did to you. What did they do? Oh, my gosh. They attacked the back lines so you got to remember, Israel is, 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 is hundreds of thousands of people, men, plus women and children. So there's, it's a huge convoy, and they're going through the land, and the, the Malachites waited until they walked by, walked past, and they attacked the rear flanks where all the weak and the young and the elderly were. Yep. Sound familiar? What do you think just happened three and a half weeks ago? Do you know where the ancient Amalekites lived? The southern part of Gaza. I posted a map yesterday, so. I'm not I am I am not non-merciful. I'm not racist. I'm not anti-Arab. I'm not anti I am anti, you know, I, I I do have a problem when there's injustice. I do have a problem with this isn't this isn't war. It's not like an army attacked Israel. No. Uh, a, a, a bunch of terrorists, a bunch of savages attacked citizens in their sleep in bed on a double Shabbat morning. That's not war. There's nothing noble about that. And what Lenny said, that's what free Palestine, that's what that looks like. See, this isn't about free Palestine. You're an idiot if you think that's what this is about. Palestine is, isn't free because of Hamas. That's right. And the biggest joke is that Israel are colonizers. <laughs> you, have, you have Not only are you ignorant, but you have to be a special stupid to believe that narrative. There, we have been warning about the anti-Semitism that was that's coming. It's here. It's emboldened. It's in our country. It's all over the world right now. It's bad. It's only going to get worse. Even if it stopped, it's going to get worse. Even if for somehow, some way. God shows mercy on the planet because it's not just the U.S. It's the whole world right now that's in flame. Look at what happened in southern Russia at the airport. That and that's even ancient history. What happened with that with that people group in southern Russia at the airport? That's that even goes back a long time. Um, They're not only after Jews. They've made it very. I mean, it's always. I mean, we've always known this. It's not like new. But they're after. They're after Americans. They're after Christians and Jews. Christians and Jews are in their sights. That's who they're coming after. And you're going to find a bunch of Christians and Jews in America. 
and the prophets are warning us about sleeper cells. I mean, that, that's, a, that's not even, <laughs> you don't even need the spirit of prophecy to, to figure that out. That's just a, that's a no-brainer. We can, yeah. We need to we need to pray that for God's mercy, and then we need to pray for God's mercy in our country, and then we have to pray for God's mercy in our state, and then in our city, and that He protects us. Okay, and because this thing is spiritual, I mean, you don't have to go looking for a fight. It's gonna if it wants, it can come. It'll come looking for you. You know, supermarket. You know, I wear I wear I wear tassels every day. I don't wear big long honking rope ones, you know, because it's not about that. But I've got Hebrew tattooed on my body. Um, Situational awareness, spiritual situational awareness. We've talked about that before. I mean, the questions questions have come up. Do we take down our mezuzahs? We're not going to, but I mean, it, we've had those discussions. We're having those discussions with people. I'm going to L.A. in a couple weeks, and I'm singing at the House of Blues, and I don't know what's going to happen. I'm real vocal about my positions politically regarding Israel. I don't anticipate anything happening. I mean, I'm not. In, I don't. I'm not afraid, but you know, there might be some dumbasses in the audience. I mean, you never know. It's not like that hasn't happened. There's, I mean, it's even in a uh, popular Christian musician wrote a book on, it came out on, uh, on relevant books when they were still a book publishing company. They're at that liberal magazine now. And he talks about a show that they played with my band in 1989 in Orange County where I confronted a dozen white supremacists <laughs> that were in the audience. And I <laughs> took off my sweatshirt, and I was wearing a T-shirt with the, the outline of the country of Africa in Rasta colors. And it said Black Power on it or something. And I had a black guitarist, and these guys went nuts. And, uh, you know, I took, I took them on. Um, so it's not like it's never happened before. Um, it's not like, you know, it wouldn't be my first rodeo. And then, you know, I, I, it's a little surprising if you go look at the lyrics to the Sin Disease, how often I bring up white supremacy and racism in the lyrics. It's kind of weird. I don't know why, but I did, like two or three times. I have zero tolerance for that. I have zero tolerance for racism of any kind. <laughs> Tony, just pray for us. Pray for each other. Submit yourself and pray. What was submit yourselves one to another and you will be healed. Pray for each other. Hold each, hold us hold us all in prayer. It is spiritual. Be wise, be vigilant. A lot's happened in three weeks. 
it's I think it's happening pretty fast. It could be faster, obviously, but I think it's happening pretty fast. It is I'm gonna, I was about I was just about to say it's so out of our control, but it's not. Because we can pray. We can we can we've been encouraged to pray and we can pray. For stuff to settle down, for God to have mercy. Let me. This this has to happen, people. To encourage you, what I'm about to say here is to encourage you. This has to happen, and it has to get even worse in order for Messiah to return. He, re, if it says Israel will, will be trodden under the foot of the Gentile nations for three and a half years, guess what? That's going to happen. It's going to suck. It's going to look really bad, but that's going to happen. Guess what? A beast is going to arise. A beast system is going to arise, and the dragon is going to come over charismatic Torah observers. That has to happen in order for Messiah to return. And and un, and and contra, you know, because Christianity doesn't understand it or whatever. The return of Messiah is to deliver the nation state of Israel from her enemies, her physical mortal enemies. He comes down, he attacks them, blood up to his chest. He's going to reestablish the boundaries walked by Abraham, which means toppling a whole bunch of Islamic countries. That's not going to go over very well. He's going to be considered... He will be mistaken for a Jewish terrorist hell-bent on Zionism, Jesus, which is going to, the majority of Christianity will not know it's him. Because the majority of Christianity doesn't believe, well, they're not charismatic, for one. Two, they're definitely not Torah observant, and they don't believe, a lot of Christians don't believe that Israel is the, is, is the Israel of the Bible. Islam sure does. Why do you think the Islam wants them out? Why do you think this is happening? That's how good our enemy is. Our enemy is so good. He's so really, really good at what he's doing. He, Israel thought he was Jesus was uh, Messiah was coming as a as a lion. He comes as a lamb. Screws the whole deal up. They couldn't. They couldn't. They, they it, it, right. It was too much. They couldn't handle it. Many are called. Few are chosen. Blessed is he that is not offended by me. He's coming back as the lamb, and for some reason, he's coming back as a lion. Uh, uh, right? So th they thought he was coming as a lion. He comes as a lamb. For some freaking reason, Christianity thinks he's coming back as a lamb, and he doesn't care about nation states, especially that horrific apartheid colonizing nation state of Israel. And, and Alan, didn't, didn't you know his kingdom's not of this world? I mean, this is the argument the Christian left has. And there's more of them than there are of us. But he's coming back, not as a lamb, he's coming back as a lion, lion conquering governments, kings. Yep. And when he establishes those borders that Abraham walked, Abraham walked, they're going to topple Islamic states that are going to be uh, uh, problematic for a lot of Christians, for a lot of Western Romanized Christians, what's coming is going to be pretty problematic. The enemy of our soul is so good at what he does, being able to twist all that stuff. He's good at his job. This has to happen. You have to. You you can't have an Elijah without a Jezebel. You can't have the return of Messiah without a tribulation, without a beast system, without an antichrist, without a false prophet, without all that crazy stuff going on. And for some reason, we're here to watch it, to see it. To pray it, to pray through it, to pray against it, to pray over it. 
it's not like he made a mistake. Uh, you made a mistake, God. You got the wrong team. I mean, it's one thing for me to think or believe that maybe we've entered into the tribulation period. Maybe this is that. Maybe this is it. It's one thing for me to say, to believe that, because I'm I I I I I cautiously suggested that three weeks ago. But then look at the word that I got in October, literally uh, in 2019, four years ago, that we were all, and it was life as usual. You know, life as usual was was going to change. It was time to be adulting. It was time to adult, take care of our business. Right? It's one thing for me to think that, but when. Other prophets like Cindy Jacobs and Chuck Smith and Lance Wall now, when they start suggesting the same, I'm like, I'm like, we're, you know, we're, we're 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 I'm laying in bed last night with Christina. We're sitting there talking and we're we're talking about this, and I'm just like, oh, getting I'm getting I'm getting uh, irritated by our conversation because not only am I not ready for winter. Hell, I don't think I'm ready for this. For this. But, it, right, but how amazing. It's just insane. And I want to be wrong. Don't get me wrong. I want to be wrong about this, man. I so want to be wrong about this. I want us all to be wrong about this. Because like I said earlier, I, there's nothing romantic. There's absolutely nothing romantic about the end time scenario, except for the return of Messiah. That's the only cool thing about it. But look at the, what has to happen in order for that to happen. All right, I'm done. Can you guys say something? Talk, cut me off. It's overwhelming, man. I always okay. use that. Oh, go ahead. Uh, but my quick thing is pray daily, pray in the spirit, ask for discernment for you and the family, ask for discernment for the leaders of Israel, and pray the peace of Jerusalem and the Lord's Prayer. Your will be done, your kingdom come, Lord. And the last one would be uh, last verse in Psalm 19. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. Be pleasing in your sight, Lord. Personally, we're, we're, respond, we're not, we can't help what the world does to us, but we can be responsible through the Holy Spirit and the power of the armor of God to be responsible for our actions. You know, I just want to encourage you, be filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm just... Going back to those words of Jesus the last night before he got crucified, and he knew his disciples, they were filled with sorrow. And he says, you know what? I got to tell you something. Unless I go, he can't come. And when he comes, he's going to bring you truth. And he says, when he comes, it's that three-legged three, prong, it's that three um, stool. All three got to be there or else it falls over. He says he will convince the world of righteousness, sin, and judgment. You want to have your balance? Yeah. Search the scriptures and look at what righteousness is. That right relationship. Understand what sin is. Put it in its place. And understand the judgment to come, what's going to happen. But he also goes on to say, he goes, and now when he comes and he dwells within you, and you're going to be living with this in this place where you understand his work. Not only is he going to give you the gifts to survive and the gifts to proclaim the kingdom of God, he says, I'll show you things to come. That's where your discernment's going to kick in. He's going to tell you when to go and where not to go. And I, I'm bringing it down to the basic reality of what this says. 
you know, we can we try to sermonize it, but there's something very real and practical for you today. And then, you know, and the next page, you know what he says? Now you can ask the father you know, and you can ask him for what you will and he will give it to you. This is the promise that we have for what's coming. I'm telling you, his words are filled with life. Study the words in red. Take a look at what he's saying. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Learn and live in righteousness, his peace and joy, but understand that it's he's convict, convicting the world of sin by even its actions, by your obedience. And you know the judgment to come, but his promise is there. He will show you what's to come, and you can ask the Father. We're in those days now. Yeah. And like, yeah, like, like, like they both said, don't, this isn't about walking in fear. It's about walking in wisdom. Right. Know that you're supposed to go where you're going, when you're supposed to go, right. when you're going. For protection. Because this thing is spiritual. Yeah. You want to be wise. Um, so apparently, today... Noah entered the ark, and the rain began to fall. You're listening to Chameleon Church. Biblical antidotes for the modern man. With your host, Alan Aguirre. The views and opinions expressed during our broadcasts are solely those of the broadcast producers, hosts, and or guests, etc., and are not necessarily the views or opinions of the Travelog Network, its sponsors, or affiliates.